hello ladies and gentlemen this is destiny from Desfix, and welcome back to another video in the e-commerce projects using django in this one we'll get started working with paypal payments in django that is what we'll be doing hopefully you will enjoy the video and learn something new consider checking out some of the links in the description below as one of them might be useful for you also drop a like on the video and subscribe into the channel as that will really mean the world to me so let's get started so i will open up my code editor and right now i think the only thing we need to do is create two functions for actually getting paypal access token and also verifying paypal payments then we we'll connect it to the front end inline payments and we should be done but before you do that please make sure that you have already gotten your api keys remember i talked about api key that we need to actually run most of this features so for the paypal payments we will need the client's id and the secret id you could create a paypal sandbox account so paypal sandbox accounts i think it's actually available for all countries even if paypal is available in your country or not the sandbox should be so sign up for a business sandbox account grab your paypal client id and secret id from your dashboard or your settings then put them in here okay and after you have done that I also want you to make good use of this repository that I have provided for the project materials. You can see a new um, file here called API endpoints. This is the one that we will be using for PayPal access token, PayPal transaction verification. And as we keep going, I'll add many more here. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's start with this two firstly. Okay, so what do we, what do we want to do? Let's create the first function that will be called get paypal get paypal access token access token and in here we just need to call the token url and this is the token url here so you could go ahead and copy this and you want to paste it down here okay and after you've done that that is it so the next thing is to compile the data that we will be using so say data should be equal to settings dot paypal underscore client underscore id so go ahead and make sure that you're firstly importing settings so let me import that from django.conf import settings very good and also you want to make sure that in your settings.py you have all the payments being brought in so let me show you what that means Firstly, I think we have an error over here. So we have an error here. That should be token underscore URL. So back to the settings, you can see that over here we have this ENVs for PayPal clients and this. So I want you to take this to this and also this. And in your settings, look for a comfortable place that you can paste it like here then bring it in via the ENV. So say ENV should be this. Remember that we configured ENV in the first tutorial or so, so. So after adding it in like this, that's about it. So after you've added in, in it in like this, that's basically what we want to do. Now go ahead and rerun your server again, Python manage py run server. And let's see what happens. There you go, our server is running. So back to the view. We grab the PayPal client's ID and I, we also need the PayPal secret ID. So alongside the client's ID also put in the settings dot PayPal secret ID. So this will go into the settings py and grab whatever a variable that's called PayPal secret ID. Okay. So after you've done that, then we need to then make a call using the requests function. So requests dot post my important request let me confirm that just hold on nope so let's go ahead imports requests very good and after you've imported requests get back here and let's make it a post request so the api token url and data that we'll be passing in should be data and also authentication it be authentication so this will work because this is what it accept, it's actually accepts 
but i think there is just a minor issue please change this data here to alt okay and we need to create its own data so we need to say data should be equal to and it needs us to pass grants type which is basically a way that we want to use to authenticate this api please make sure it's a dictionary not a list so grants type for this one should be client underscore cree then shells so passing a client credentials basically means that we want to use our our client id and secret id to log in instead of something like an access token because it doesn't really make sense to use an access token to maybe authenticate when we are trying to get the access token so you need some some work some way else or some other method to authenticate so after passing in this response this response is going to return some status code so let's check if response dot status code is equal to 200 that means everything went well right let's just go ahead and return response dot json and from this response dot json access underscore token will be appended to it so grab the access token okay and after you have done this one what if for some reason um, we couldn't get the access token so if you can't get the access token let's go ahead and raise exception raise exception and what do you want to say you could let's return an formatted string and say something like build to get access token access token from paypal then you could you could take it a step further and say status code then over here you could call the response dot status code very good so when you have done this that is pretty much it let's create the next function for actually verifying paypal payments so see define paypal underscore payment underscore verify and we need to pass in requests and also order id so the first thing to do is fetch the order so order should be equal to store models dot order dot objects dot get where order underscore id should be equal to order underscore id okay so after you've done all that we need to grab the transaction id from the gets or from the url query params which will be stored in the get method so say transaction underscore id should be equal to requests dot get dot get so what do we want to get we want to get transaction underscore id you don't need to worry about this once i'll show you how to append this when we start working with the front end okay or how this transaction ids are appended all that will be when we start working with the front end or the html so when you've gotten the transaction id let's create the paypal api url it should be equal to let's take this remember this so go ahead take it and it should be in here very good so when you have done it transaction id here is what we basically fetched over here okay now the next set of things that it needs should be heads headers rather so headers it needs a content type and it needs it to be application json okay and after that we need authorization so authorization should be in an f formatted string i want to pass in bearer and then let's call the get paypal access token function okay just like this so what we're basically doing now is compiling the informations that we will send over to paypal to verify this payment if it actually did go through okay and after you have passed that in for the header go ahead and make a call a get request to the paypal api url to see if our payments actually went through so we'll say response should be equal to requests dot get because it's a get method and we want to make a call to the paypal api url 
I think I misspelled URL. It should be lowercase URL. So we make a request to the PayPal API URL. We also need to pass in a couple of things like the headers. So headers should be exactly the headers. Now this one is going to cut out for, uh, please make sure that this header here is what you're passing in here. Okay. So that we don't have an issue and make sure that this one here is PayPal API URL with the comma. There you go. Our server is running well as expected. Now, if everything goes through on this API, it's going to return a status code of 200, which means everything is okay. So check if response. So if response dot status code is equal to 200, that means everything went well. All we just need to do is go ahead and grab the PayPal order data from the response JSON by saying PayPal underscore order underscore data should be equal to response dot json good so now after we've made the payments on the front end we will also return a status from the front end over to the server but that status is not what we will be relying on to actually validate payments so we then need to still get that status even though it's not what we'll be relying on so paypal payment underscore status should be equal to okay i was thinking about something so i initially wanted to get the status from the front end and also the one from the verification but if the one for the verification returns completed the one from the front end we should not really make any sense over here so we could just ditch that one for now okay so paypal payment status should be paypal order data and we want to grab the status value from that response okay so this paypal response here which is stored in response.json will contain a key called status that also holds the value of status might be completed or failed or whatever it is but we grab that and put it over here in this paypal payment status variable okay and after that pay payment method yeah it should obviously be paypal so payments method i don't know why i'm getting that from the front end so payments method you could just say paypal so this is basically everything that i have so this is basically everything that i will be needing to actually verify and validate payments now let's check if pay paypal payment status if it's equal equal to completed okay just like that then what do we want to do let's go ahead and update the order but before we even update the order let's firstly check if order.processing if order.payment status is still processing that's when we want to turn it to paid so if order dot payment status is still equal to mm, processing should be the best one to use yeah then what do we want to do so if order of payment status is processing then we want to go ahead and say order dot payment status should be equal to paid with them we'll mark it as paid right you could also say order dot payment method should be equal to payment method very good or you could directly still put paypal in there so um i think that is everything that i need right now Let's just go ahead and save this order by saying order dot save. So that means everything went well, payments were successful. I want to delete cuts. So let's create a new cuts delete function that when we call it, it's just deletes the cuts for us. So call this define clear cut items. And then you just need to pass in requests in here. And in a try catch, we need to basically gets the cat id from the request session so request dot session uh oh i named this card instead of cat id so then we want to grab the cat id from the session that's it only if it exists then let's go ahead and delete the cat items by saying store model dot cat dot objects dot filter 
and cat underscore id should be equal to cat underscore id then delete everything good so what we just did over here now we'll say hey get all the cart items related to this particular user's cart id and delete all of them from the cart which means we don't need them anymore then let's create an except for now i want you to pass okay and actually i want you to for now just return an empty string or just return an empty data just like that okay we're not returning anything as good as returning none or null so after you have done all this take the clear cart items and put it below the other dot save call it and make sure that you pass in request as parameter so that it clears out the cuts efficiently okay so yeah that is pretty much it but it only makes sense that we redirect users to some places right so read the rect so after we've cleared the cut items let's go ahead and return redirect back to the payment success page so in an F formatted string, I'm going to return back to a page called payment underscore status. And um, we can append the other ID there. Yes. So say other dots, other ID. Like this. Good. And um, let me add, append payment status should be equal to paid. Equal to paid. So that one that one doesn't really have to that one isn't really there for a lot of you know confirmation configuration it's just there for the purpose of changing up the front end ui so that it can display maybe payment success or payment field okay hopefully you understand so if response code is not 200 which means it's something else maybe 400 403 500 then i want to return payment field so payment field so after you have done this now what i just want you to do is go ahead and create a new payment status page so that we can quickly show um the payments so payment status takes in requests and also other id and then you need to return the templates over there so if you want you can look for any of those templates that we have written in the past take one of them and just return it there like that okay um contexts for context okay let's go ahead and in fact it's supposed to look almost identical to the checkout so if you don't want to stress yourself out you could just take this checkout like this and put it in the payment that's good just change up the template's name like that and we are done so um after you have done this make sure that you're creating this template which is payment status so in templates store make sure you create payment status good and after that let's configure urls so this should be paypal payments verify very good same goes there same comes here all good so that is it you can see how we have been able to write the function to actually get access token and also the function to verify the payments now all that's left is for us to just go ahead and initialize the functions that we already have the javascript functions that we already have and make a call to the api and yeah we should be done so how do we get started with this now i want you to open up your checkout html again and you can close up this and this so that we have more space real estate to work with okay and um starting from here you can see that i have defined some shapes here and just so you guys know i i got most of this from documentation and most of this over here was things that i've actually written already so that we don't have to encounter a lot of videos and you guys already have you know the top notch and top working code for this so you can see it's it's a very simple paypal function got it from their documentation using this um paypal sdk link over here by the way i'm gonna add my public key here so using this i was able to call this paypal.buttons 
and then grab all these other attributes and properties then over here we are creating a new order but instead of this order total that that is showing up like this it needs to be order dot total okay so you can see over here replace with the actual order total a very simple comment to guide you through that and um yeah that is it this one looks good over here we verify the payments don't worry i will explain this then you can see we are this is how we will return to the paypal verification domain so paypal payments verify order id here should be order dot order underscore id transaction should be order data or transaction very good so let me explain what's going on now as soon as you import this cdn here you already have all the paypal objects objects in your project so importing that gives us access to all the paypal payments and its objects so that is why we're able to create a new function called init in its paypal button which initializes the paypal button and then what we did over here was call paypal.buttons so we're able to call this paypal because we have imported it here so we said paypal.buttons which is basically an attribute on paypal then we styled the button out and after that we created a new order and passed into parameters data and action then this over here what it just does is create a new order object on paypal it's just a way of telling paypal hey paypal a new payment or a new transaction or a new order is coming in then paypal will go ahead and set this up for us so this will be set up we'll open up the the self-hosted payments page enter your authentication details and hit pay now then on approve if everything goes well on approve is going to trigger and you can see over here we captured the results so that you can look at it if you wish to and also you can see over here we show a success message within this page for example you can see this so we grab the element id paper element id we hide it okay and then we change it over here to verify payment so instead of showing this button let me show you so as soon as we click on this pay with paypal it starts opening up the paypal payments page right as soon as it's done we make it to disappear and instead show verifying payments so that we don't keep the user hanging or in the dark without knowing what's going on all right and when everything goes through we redirect them back to the endpoints that we verify the payments for them okay you can see over here i said hey you can still go to another url by saying actions that redirect maybe to thank you the html or to wherever you want okay so after we did all this on error on error we logged the error to see what's going on and finally we rendered everything to the paypal button container good so when you have done this what i want you to do next is go ahead and get your paypal client id and put it in the checkout so in views py scroll all the way to the checkout here and i want you to put in your paypal client id and then also call it from the settings so settings dot paypal underscore client underscore id very good so this is just what i want you to do okay so now when you've done this take this paypal client id get back to checkout html and replace it with this test so replace it with that very good i think i'm done with this let's go ahead and test it out good 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 i'm done so to test this out i will just reload this page just to make sure that everything is synced up and working perfectly well now i will go ahead and hit pay with paypal see it opens this up but can you see it's actually opening up but we have this pop-up that closes it so this has been a, a real issue for a very long time with a lot of you guys but i found a cool way to fix this let me so the way that i found requires that you hop back to your settings py and scroll all the way to the section where we have allowed host let me get back there see allowed host and i want you to add just this one simple line of code which is secure cross origin opener policy same origin allow pop-ups so with that close this up and you can also cancel paypal and maybe you could just reload the page the paypal page and go ahead and click on the paypal 
See, it's loading up now without the pop-up, and that's very nice. So now it's prompting that I log in. I'm going to log in with my credentials. Good. Good. It's logged in. Now I will go ahead and pay one eleven sixty nine. So we pay complete purchase. And this should take us to the and you see it's showing verifying payments. Good. So it brings us here, which is the PayPal verify payments with a transaction ID. Very good, very good. But if we get this error that says memory view, a bytes like object is required, not str. So where exactly is this error coming from? So one thing that can come in mind is that this error seems to be around our access token. So let's look for our access token. See, this is a dictionary, but I'm using a comma. Please remove that and put a, put a colon over there instead. Okay. And I also want to log this get access token. Let me be sure of what I'm getting. So please print get access token. Good. So that we know what we are getting, if it's actually working or not. Oh, please remove that from the heading. Okay. And put it down here. The heading nothing is supposed to be in there. Nothing is supposed to be in there apart from the contents type and the authorization. So after you have printed this, I think that's about it. Just to make sure that everything is synced, I'll break up from my server and rerun it. All right, there you go, it's running. So let's try this out again. I will reload this page. See, we got the access token. Very good. Can you see? Good. It returns status paid. And let's see if the order actually got paid or marked as paid in the database. If it does, if it did, then we are done with payments. So order was marked as paid. Congratulations, we are done. See, payments method updated to PayPal. Very good. So with all this out of the way now, let's change up the payment status. So I'll take the zero templates and look for payment underscore status, which is this one. Then I'm going to take this, this body. Come over to my own payment status, which is blank for now. Paste that. And then you could look for where you, we could get the extends which is here i'm gonna take this one and also this one put them down here and also here good i hope by now you should be following along with this let's reload this page why is it showing page not found so payment status with its id oh yeah i think i saw what's going on so in the um let me see in the views py after payments see we are redirecting back to this page but this is a slash instead of a question mark being after the slash hence we got the issue okay so let's try out this payments thing one more time and see how everything goes good so I just reloaded this page and he, I'm going to hit pay with PayPal and let's see what happens. So then I'll go ahead and complete purchase and let's see what happens. So there you go. I'm verifying now. I'm verifying. And I need to get pushed here. Good. So I get pushed here. That's okay. But you can see that it's showing this. It's written none instead. 
Is there an, I think there is an issue. PayPal payment verified didn't return a valid HTTP response, it returned null instead. So I think I actually know what might be causing this issue. Um, right now, the order, this order is already paid and we're trying to pay for it again. So please change it to processing so that we don't break anything or maybe cause an issue over here. Okay. So, so if you, if you can take the, the route of adding new items to cards, that's totally okay. You could do that. Add new items to cards and try paying again from scratch. So I'm going to pay again. And then I'm going to complete purchase. Good. Now it's verifying. And there you go. Status paid. This is now coming in very well. But it still seems to be showing payment page not found. So what's going on? Have we configured the payment status? Nope. I knew something was off. So payments status please go ahead create the url for that and now let's reload and see mm, i don't know why i feel like my server is not synced so let me resync my server by reloading it oh there you go i told you guys i I had a feeling that my server was actually not really catching up so as you can see everything is working well you can see payment status order completed and all this but please don't fall for this it's not really exactly what i want yet let's just change it up a little bit so you can see payments went through here which is order completed but we want to change this based on whatever that was appended over here if it's filled show filled if it's um paid show this one okay so to be able to do that open up your views py come over to payment status create a new variable here i will call this variable payment underscore status and i'll say this should be equal to request dot get dot get good so now we are now able to grab this and put it in our server now from the server let's send it back to the front end you can still grab this from the front end okay but i just want to keep things secure for now all right so now payment status can now be accessed here in the template just to try that out you see paid good so now whenever you call payment status it goes up there yeah. this is very good so now let's change things up a little bit order completed see this icon i don't need anything from that icon and below i don't need anything from this icon all the way to those view orders or other field when it's other field i don't need that hopefully you get So you could minimize this and then you could say if payment underscore status is equal equal to paid then you could show this if it's not equal to paid if it's equal to field then let's show something else So I'm saying order not completed here. You could still say payments not completed or, you know, whatever you want to pass in there. So I'm going to remove this for now. So order not completed. This should be a try again button, right? Again button. Now, one thing I would recommend that you do is take them back to the checkout. to so try again instead of allowing them to create new orders. So take them to store checkouts order dot order underscore id they should try the payments again okay so all this is going to run only if payments fails and i want to change the 
the icon from hearts to ban if payment fails from text su success to text danger from text primary to text danger good from bg lights yeah i think that's okay for me just make sure that in the other paid that you're changing the other id so instead of this long id just say other dots other id all right i think that's about it see that's it so if we change this to field see or they're not completed but just like i said please do not bother about user changing this to paid and field even if a user manually changes this one over here to paid or to feed it does not affect the back end it's not our business whether they change it to paid or field it's just for the purpose of showing or displaying some text over here okay so do not worry about this one over here even if a user wants to change it to paid nothing is going to happen they won't be able to pay for it okay so yeah that is it everything is working perfectly well and for now paypal has been successfully integrated in the next one we'll start off by integrating flutterwave and then we'll move on to paystack and then stripe and other payment methods out there yep that's gonna be it hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned something new if there is something that you don't understand let me know in the comment section below and i'll be happy to help you for any reason i don't see your comment please shoot me a, shoot a mail to desfix at gmail.com and i'll be more than happy to help you that being said, I hope to see you guys in the next video. And until then, mad love, peace out.